Hi. Welcome back to Movie Patrol. Today I am going to be showing a thriller film from 2019 called, The Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. There are spoilers ahead so watch out and enjoy. The movie starts at a bar in Seattle. Liz is a secretary at a university. She recently broke up with her boyfriend, so her friend wanted to bring her out of the house. She notices a man smiling at her across the bar. His name is Ted, a student at a law school. They start to dance, and they immediately fall in love. They arrive at Liz's house, but she is hesitant to bring Ted into the house. She is a single mother, and she knew, if Ted saw her daughter, he would leave her. Despite her worries, Ted accepts her for who she is. The next morning, Liz wakes up, and sees that her daughter is missing. She runs out of the room to find her. She comes to the kitchen and sees Ted is cooking breakfast for her daughter. She smiles in relief and kisses Ted. Six years have passed. Ted is driving in Utah late at night when he gets stopped by the police. Ted leaves the car and tells the officer that he got lost. Officer says he ran two stop signs. He checks Ted's license and immediately thinks something is suspicious. The officer questions what Ted was doing in Utah when he was from Seattle. Ted says he is a law student and that he was here for school. The officer checks the car and finds a suspicious bag. He takes Ted into custody to further investigate Ted. They check Ted's bag and find suspicious tools that a law student wouldn't normally carry. Ted is included in the suspect list for attempted murder and has to participate in a voice test. The victim points at Ted, but without any physical evidence, it was hard to say Ted was the suspect. Ted is sent back home, and he reassures Liz that everything is fine, even though he was on the front page of the newspaper. That night Ted says he has to study overnight at the library to prepare for his trial. Ted says a car has been following him and that he is being set up. Liz believes him. Ted enters the library and all the girls can't keep their eyes off of him. Suddenly the security guard comes and tells Ted to leave the library. Ted can't believe he is forced to leave because his face was on the front page of the newspaper. Ted sees the car again and walks towards the car, but the car notices Ted and leaves immediately. Ted is talking to his attorney. He tells Ted that his case may be linked to the murder of college girls in Seattle. Ted doesn't understand how running stop sign links his case to a murder case. The attorney tells him that the authority found out that Ted's name has been submitted by an anonymous witness in Seattle as a suspect for the murders. The victim is asked to point at the suspect, and she points at Ted. However, Ted's attorney uses the victim to his advantage and turns the tide around for Ted. He takes a deep breath of relief. A girl named Carol approaches Ted. He tells Liz that she is someone he knew back in Seattle. Ted tells her that he is engaged to Liz. She seems disappointed to hear that news. They are leaving the court when they see a dog. Liz says she hopes to get a dog one day. The dog starts barking at Ted. He silences the dog just by looking at it. That night Ted and Liz are at home celebrating thinking that they had already won the trial. On the day of the final trial, Ted is found guilty of the crimes charged in his case. Ted is sent to jail, and he starts studying testimonies to defend himself in court. A man comes to Ted and asks if he has ever been to Colorado. Ted says he is a law student and that he doesn't have time to travel. Ted asks who the man is, and he says he specializes in the investigation of homicide. Ted's attorney comes to talk to him. Ted hopes to hear good news from him. Ted's attorney says a homicide detective asked a question to bait him into lying that he has never been to Colorado. Ted realizes he slipped up and asks the attorney for help, but he tells him that he is not licensed in Colorado. He resigns from the case and leaves him. Ted is sent to a jail in Colorado to be trialed for the new charges put against him. Liz is talking to her friend saying that everything is a mistake. The friend doesn't believe her and says the sketch of the suspect they saw from the newspaper looked just like Ted. Ted is being trialed in Colorado and is held without bail. The defendant also suggests the possibility of a death sentence. He is being taken away to jail when he sees a wide open window across a room. Ted is on an interview proclaiming his innocence and Liz is watching the interview. It's the day of the trial. When the judge calls for a break, Ted asks to use the phone. Ted sees that the officer is distracted and decides to jump out the window. He looks back to check on the officer. He jumps down and limps away as fast as he can. The officer notices that Ted had jumped out the window and immediately goes after him. Ted changes his clothes in the alley and walks out casually. Liz sees the news that Ted broke out and hopes he would visit her. Her friend says it's impossible and that there are cops everywhere. Ted is recaptured after six days in the mountain where he stayed. 
he was returned to court and had additional charges on his case. Liz comes to visit Ted and tells him that she loves him, but she can't be with him anymore. He begs her to not leave him, but Liz abandons him. Ted sees soft spots on the ceiling around the light. Ted hides a piece of metal in his sock. He starts to carve out the ceiling with the metal. He hears a sound and pretends as nothing happened. He cuts out a box and escapes the prison through the ceiling. The homicide detective visits Liz and leaves her a confidential document. Liz doesn't open it. After escaping the prison, Ted is seen at a bar in Florida with two girls. Ted is driving again at night and gets stopped by the police. Ted immediately realizes that he made a big mistake. He thinks of a way to get out of the situation. Ted stabs the police with a key and runs away. Ted is caught again and he sees a new detective. He says Florida is home to the death sentence and that he won't get away this time. Officers enter the room to take a picture of Ted's teeth for a piece of evidence. Carol visits Ted. Ted talks to Carol and tells her that he is being used for political agenda and that everything is a setup. Carol believes Ted and tells him that she will move to Florida to support his case. She also tells him that their encounter back in Utah wasn't a coincidence. She came to his trial in Utah to meet him, but when Ted told her that he was engaged, she decided to leave him. Ted meets his public defender who took his case. He tells Ted that he will be on the first nationally televised trial in history. He also tells Ted that if he pleads guilty now he will at least avoid the death penalty. Ted says he will not plead guilty to any of the charges. The trial begins and teenage girls came to watch the trial. The trial is being televised and Liz is watching it from the TV. The girls are on the interview testifying that Ted is not a murderer. The defendant brings out pieces of evidence that point to Ted as the murderer. The public defendant suggests Ted to plead guilty before it's too late, but he refuses to do so. He acts on his own and the public defendant resigns the case. The trial resumes and Ted proposes to Carolyn in the court. This gives Ted extra time to resume the trial on a different date. Ted continues to prove his innocence in front of the public even without his public defender. On the day of the final trial, Carolyn tells Ted that she is pregnant. Ted walks out in hopes of good news. Liz is also watching the trial. The judge gives a verdict that Ted is guilty of all of the charges associated with him. The judge sentences him to the death penalty. Ted is giving his final statement that he is not the murderer and this sentence is meant for someone that is not him. Liz visits Ted before he gets his death penalty. Liz tells Ted that she was the one who gave his name to the police in Seattle. She says that she lived with the guilt that if Ted wasn't the murderer she would have been the one who ruined an innocent person's life. Liz asks Ted to tell her the truth. Ted says he didn't do the crimes and that everything is fabricated. Liz takes out a picture received by the detective in the past. She shows Ted the picture. It was a picture of a woman with a missing head. Liz demands an answer, telling Ted to release her from the guilt. Ted doesn't say anything and starts writing something in the mirror. We see the flashback that shows Ted was the one who murdered these women. Liz finds out how she killed the woman and leaves the room in shock. The movie was based on a true story of a man named Ted Bundy that shocked the whole world. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and turn on the notification button so you don't miss out on any content.